Hello, beautiful people of the internet. How are you doing today? My name is Jackie, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, by the time you are seeing this, it should be February 19th, aka my 21st birthday. Yay! I really should be holding a glass of wine in my hands in this video, but well, I'm pre-filming it, so it's still several days before my birthday. And two, even if it was my birthday, I'm pretty sure drinking wine alone in your bedroom in the middle of the afternoon would be a sign of alcoholism, so not exactly the way that I'm gonna start off my 21st birthday. However, I am gonna start it off with a bit of a book haul. I bought these for myself as a birthday gift to me from me from Book Outlet. I do a Book Outlet haul about once a year around my birthday because while I'm trying not to accumulate too many books, I love Book Outlet because I can get some great titles for really low prices. I think the most I spent on one of these books was about $7. And this is not sponsored in any way. I do not have enough subscribers for that. I'm just saying I personally really enjoy Book Outlet and I think it's a great affordable option if you want to buy some books. I have eight titles that I'm going to share with you today. I am really excited about all of them. The only question is well, which one should I get to first? I guess the top of the pile is as good a place to start as any. Also, before we start, I want to really quickly apologize if the setup for this video is not great. The lighting's probably not very good because I don't have my ring light with me. I had to leave that behind at home because I don't have room. And the light in my dorm room this year is just generally very poor. I do have a window here, but I have it closed right now and have the other one back there open because this one, I'm looking right out onto the street and everybody who would walk by would be able to look in and see me film my video, so I really didn't want to do that and also I just don't really think my room is that photogenic like this whole setup I have going on right now is very precarious I'm really hoping that my phone will stay upright so that the angle isn't constantly changing throughout this video I have it propped up against a book and a mug right now not a lot to work with but I'm just doing my best. Anyway, to get into the first book in this haul here on the top of the pile, I have And I Darken by Kirsten White. This is the first in a young adult trilogy. I'm not really sure if it's a historical retelling or more so a historical fantasy, but our main character is a young Vlad the Impaler, except Vlad is a teenage girl Vlada. So it's a retelling of that story with a female protagonist. I believe there is also some kind of love triangle or precarious like romance situation with Vlada and an Ottoman prince. And I really want to check this out because I've heard good things about this series. And also I read The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. And personally, I loved that book. I thought it was a really awesome feminist retelling of Frankenstein, one of my favorite stories. So this this is definitely something that interests me and that I would like to give a try. The next book in this haul is The Elizas by Sarah Shepard. This book follows our main character Eliza Fontaine, an author whose debut novel is about to come out. When Eliza is found in a pool, her family believes that is another suicide attempt because she has a history of suicide attempts. However, Eliza swears that she was pushed and she begins to think that a shadowy figure is following her and out to get her. A shadowy figure that looks a lot like Eliza. Eliza. This also follows the main character in Eliza's book who I believe parallels her in certain ways so the story is told from Eliza's perspective and also the perspective of her main character in her book. I've read several other Sarah Shepard books. I read at least the first Pretty Little Liars book, maybe the second one, I don't really remember, but I didn't read the whole series because there were so many and I just was attached to the TV show and that way the characters were portrayed more. I also read the first two books in the amateur series which I wasn't thrilled with and I read the first two or three Lion Game books but I never finished that series. Oh and I also read her standalone The Heiresses which I really liked. The reason that I wanted to get this on Book Outlet was because I've heard mixed negative reviews for this book but I still want to check it out because it's an author that I've read many other books from before. So when I saw it on Book Outlet for a really good price I thought that was a great opportunity for me 
me to pick this up because though I'm still interested in reading it, it's not something that I think I would have wanted to spend full price on. I really haven't been liking Sarah Shepard's more recent books. They just weren't as good to me as some of her older works. I know she has another book, Reputation, that is either coming out soon or just came out, so I do want to check that out at some point as well. I just think because of the mixed reception, seeing this on Book Outlet I think was the best way for me to acquire this book. And I will be checking it out. Who knows? Maybe I'll really like it. I think it is a really interesting concept. Next I have the first book in another young adult series. However, this one is more of a mystery and that is A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro, which is the first in her Charlotte Holmes series. This book takes place at a private school in Connecticut where we follow Jamie Watson and Charlotte Holmes who are descendants of the original Holmes and Watson, and together the two of them end up solving mysteries at their school after they are both framed for one of their classmates murder. This is something that I've heard good things about. I think Emma from Emma Books really likes this series and has talked about how much she enjoys it. I also think it's kind of an interesting concept to do a sort of like a redo of Holmes and Watson but where they're teenagers and Holmes is a girl. I think that's really cool. When I was in high school I had this idea for a book that I thought I was gonna write where Holmes and Watson were going to be teenagers at like an Upper East Side private school and they were going to be lesbians, but I never ended up writing that so I don't really know why I'm bringing it up. But anyways, a series that I've heard good things about that I think I might be interested in, so I'm definitely going to give this a shot. I also think the cover is really cute. I like it. Continuing on with the mystery theme, I acquired another mystery book. However, instead of being a modern twist on a classic mystery, this actually is a classic, and that is The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie. This is the fourth in her Hercule Poirot mystery series, so this will probably be the next Hercule Poirot I read the next time I am looking to read some Agatha Christie, because the other two that I have that I haven't read are Death on the Nile and Cards on the Table, which both chronologically come after this in the series. And honestly, you don't have to read the Hercule Poirot's in order. It really does seem to matter that much, but I think I'll probably just read this one first, considering out of the three that I have that I currently haven't read, it's first chronologically. I don't know a whole lot about the plot, and the description on the back is a little vague. I will just read it to you. Roger Ackroyd knew too much. He knew that the woman he loved had poisoned her brutal first husband. He suspected also that someone had been blackmailing her. Then, tragically, came the news that she had taken her own life with a drug overdose. But the Evening Post brought Roger one last fatal scrap of information. Unfortunately, before he could finish reading the letter, he was stabbed to death. This is a Christie that I've heard so much praise for. Some people say it's their absolute favorite Christie, and apparently it has a mind-blowing reveal at the end. Nobody spoil it for me if you have read this before, because I heard that this is a twist you really, really do not want to be spoiled on. I have been spoiled about other Christies, like Murder on the Orient Express, but so far I don't know the reveal of this one, and I want to keep it that way, because I have heard so many amazing things about this mystery and how amazing it is and how it all comes together. Next I have an anthology collection and that is Dangerous Women edited by George R. R. Martin and Gardner Dozos and it has original fiction by Jim Butcher, Diana Gabaldon, Lev Grossman, Sherilyn Kenyon, Brandon Sanderson, Sharon K. Penman, Joe Abercrombie, Terry Vaughn, and many more. Each story in this anthology focuses on badass, dangerous women from the past, present, and the future. There are lots of popular authors in here. There is an Outlander short story in here by Diana Gabaldon, which follows a young Jamie Frazier and Ian Murray when they are in France. There is a short story by Brandon Sanderson. There is something a part of one of Jim Butcher's series. And there is a story by George R. R. Martin, who also edited this collection, which takes place in the A Song of Ice and Fire universe. It's called 
called The Princess and the Queen and it takes place during the Targaryen Civil War called The Dance with Dragons. I think a lot of The Princess and the Queen was later reused when he did Fire and Blood so I'm not sure how new that story will be to me considering I have read Fire and Blood. However, I thought this anthology would be a good thing for me to pick up because there are some really popular authors in here and it just sounds like the kind of stories that I would want to read because I love female-centric stories. I love femme fatales. I love female villains. I love female anti-heroes. I just think this is a kind of anthology that I would be interested in picking up. Next I have two more thrillers to share with you and those are Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney and The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. First I will talk about Sometimes I Lie. This follows our main character Amber who is in a coma and she does not remember how she got in this coma. However, while she can't open her eyes or speak, she can hear everything that everyone around her is saying. She begins to suspect her husband or her sister who she thinks might have been having an affair and there is someone who is visiting her bedside every night but not saying anything. The description on the back is really interesting. It says, my name is Amber Reynolds. There are three things you should know about me. One, I'm in a coma. Two, my husband doesn't love me anymore. And three, sometimes I lie. Sounds really interesting, like a good psychological thriller. Then the other thriller I got, The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. I read The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. I thought that one was only okay, but I've heard so much praise for her as an author that I really want to check out more of her books. I got The Turn of the Key for Christmas, haven't read that one yet. And this one is one that I've heard so many good things about that I think I really have potential to possibly love this one. I don't remember our main character in this but it follows someone who finds out they are getting an inheritance from a rich relative they have never met. I'll just read the back for you because I really don't remember much about this. Oh there's no description on the back. Well never mind then. Then I really can't help you. I'll link the Goodreads in the description. It does say the, the Washington Post called it a perfectly executed suspense tale very much in the mode of Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca and that makes me more interested in it because I liked Rebecca. I really liked the creepy atmosphere. So if this can give me those same vibes I think this will be a good read for me. This was going to be the last book in the haul but then I remembered there was another book I bought recently not on Book Outlet that I have not hauled yet so I'm gonna throw that one in on the end. So the penultimate book in this haul is Fox by Nadine Brandis. I watched Nadine Brandis's videos on YouTube. I really like her channel and her content. However, I've never read one of her books before and this was one that was interesting to me. Our main character Thomas is a teenager living in Jacobean England and he is afflicted by the stone plague which is slowly turning his entire body to stone. Thomas's father is Guy Fox, who is famously remembered in history for being behind the gunpowder plot to assassinate King James of England. And in this book Guy Fox tells his son Thomas that he can cure his stone plague if he joins them on in their plot to assassinate the king. Thomas agrees but if he goes through with this plot he will destroy the family of the girl he loves and if he doesn't not only will his father and all his co-conspirators go to prison but then Thomas is going to be doomed to turn to stone. Really interesting story concept. It follows a period in history that I'm interested in with also this added element of this plague so I think this could be a really good book for me and I'm excited to check it out as my first Nadine Brandis book. And now the real final book in this haul. This is a book that I really want to read soon. I asked for it for Christmas, didn't get it, and just decided I had to buy it for myself because I couldn't wait. The wait at the library was too long. I needed this book in my life and that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Taylor Jenkins Reid is the author of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, my favorite book that I read in 2019. So of course I have to read her other book. This is a story about a band who is apparently inspired by Fleetwood Mac, Daisy Jones and the Six, and we were recounting through interviews with the different band members what happened, their story about how they came together and eventually 
fell apart. I picked this copy up at Target. It says that it has bonus song lyrics and collector's book jacket. It was also apparently picked for Reese Witherspoon's book club because it says right there, Reese's book club. And I like Reese Witherspoon. I think I trust her. Like, I don't know her, but I trust her. <laughs> This is just so exciting. I want to read this book so badly. I hope I love it. I love The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I love Taylor Jenkins Reid. I want to love this book just half as much as I loved that book. So, oh my god, these are, these are all the books that I bought myself for my birthday. I realize they're all upside down. I don't care. I can't flip them at this point. We're just gonna end the video like this. So, thank you guys. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. It was probably a hot mess. I'm a hot mess. I don't think my 21st year is going to be any different. I don't know if I'm going to become any less of a hot mess this year, but uh, at least I can legally drink now. That's, that's a bonus. Anyway guys, if you somehow like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. I post new videos every Wednesday. My social media links are down below if you want to follow me on Tumblr, Instagram, or be my friend on Goodreads. Please be my friend. Please like me. Please, please give me some validation for my birthday. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.